It might shock you to learn that most of the Salesforce teams we talk to don't have an established change management program for their Salesforce org. In this video, we are going to teach you the primary steps in a great change management process. My name is Stacy, and I'm from Chargent. If you are a Salesforce admin or consultant who wants to learn about payments and be a superstar for your organization, then you are in the right place. Let's dive right in. So here are the steps. Step one, the plan. Start your customization or development project with a plan. Gather requirements and analyze them. Have your product manager, business analyst, or technical architect create design specifications and share them with the development team for implementation. And by the way, we've made a special checklist for you on 10 ways to make Salesforce payments safe, easy, and profitable. So check that link in the description below. Step two, develop. Complete the work following the design specifications. Perform the work in an environment containing a copy of the production org's metadata, but with no production data. A Salesforce developer sandbox would be recommended. Develop on Lightning Platform using an appropriate combination of declarative tools, Process Builder, the Custom Object Wizard, and others in the UI, and programmatic tools, Developer Console, Source Code Editor, or Visual Studio Code. Step three, test. Exercise the changes you're making to check that they work as intended before you integrate them with other people's work. Do your testing in the same type of environment as you used in the develop step, but keep your development and integrated testing environment separate. At this point, focus on testing your changes themselves, not on understanding how your changes affect other parts of the release or the app as a whole. Step four, build release. Aggregate all the assets, components, functions, and features the team created or modified during the development stage into a single release artifact, a logical bundle of customizations that you deploy to production. You would often use change sets for this. However, it can be done from an IDE and a repository also. It is worth noting that Salesforce release management is a detailed and highly nuanced process. Typically, we see senior business analysts who are rather technical or a certified advanced developer work on these items. Attention to detail is everything in this step. From this point on, focus on what you're going to release, not on the contributions of individuals. Step five, test release. Test what you're actually going to deploy. Do this test safely in a staging environment that mimics production as much as possible. A Salesforce full or partial copy sandbox is recommended. Use a realistic amount of representative production data. Connect your test environments with all the external systems they need to mimic your production system's integration points. Run full regression and final performance tests in this step. Test the release with a small set of experienced people who provide feedback. Experts call this technique user acceptance testing, or just UAT. Step six, release. When you've completed your testing and met your quality benchmarks, you can deploy the customization to production. Once you have deployed, run some live tests as some permissions or other small differences can exist between Salesforce production and sandbox orgs. Training your employees and partners so they understand the changes is key for a successful Salesforce change management rollout. If a release has significant user impact, create a separate environment with realistic data for training users. And now check out this next video where you will learn more about how to improve your testing in Salesforce and with Chargent. My name is Stacy, and at Chargent, we're dedicated to helping Salesforce customers like you keep your payments simple. And remember, we're always here to help.